Hey guys, it's Logan here with Hydra 572, and it is time for a first impressions of my TNP Edition Lion Steel SR1. Now, I don't know about you guys, but being a knife nut, I've always sort of had to justify spending my money on higher end production knives to my friends, people outside the knife community, people that aren't into the hobby the way I am. I've always had to explain that when you buy a higher end knife, you're getting this beautiful mixture of mechanicals and artwork. You're getting a very useful tool that also shows just genuine artistry in the way that the lock functions, the way that things fit together seamlessly. You're getting this beautiful thing, and I've had to explain that it's sort of this process that we all go through that a lot of us start with our Gerbers, right? Because they sell them in Walmart, so these are some of the first things that we pick up because being guys, we love knives, and so we pick these things up, and well, Gerbers cut. You pay a little bit of money, you get something that cuts. That's enough for some people, but some people don't want to stop there. They keep looking. They look for better blades. They find things like lower budget Kershaws that present great quality at a budget price, and you're starting to see the things that make a knife higher quality. You're seeing better steel, an actual manufacturer, an edge that cuts much, much better. You're seeing comfortable handles, cool handle materials, better designs, all these sorts of things, and so you keep looking, and you find more and more. You find knives like the Native that are sort of in a middle price range that cost like 60, 70 bucks, and that feels like a lot, but you buy it and you get this wonderful knife that fits your hand even better, functions even better. You can feel that the mechanicals, they spent more time machining the fine details. So you spend a little bit more, you get into even the more expensive stuff. You look at stuff like the Espada, that's a beautiful blade. You get into stuff like the ZT-0200, all of these knives that cost a little bit more money, but they're beautiful. And this process, this beautiful process that us knife nuts go down, it ends, for some of us, with knives like the SR-1. Or does it? Is this really a blade that represents the culmination, that mixture of art, that quality that you would expect when you spend 30 hours or so, in my case, working and you make a lot of money and you spend it on a blade? Well, no. Not in any fitting way, at least. And I will admit without shame that I just blended two videos together. Normally when I do that, it's because I made a mistake. I try to make the blend as inconspicuous as possible so we can all stay focused on the video. Yeah, you've probably seen it before. This time I'm doing it because this knife was presented terribly. And when I sat down behind the camera to film my first impressions, I just bitched for 10 minutes. And everything that I had to say was pretty valid, but I would rather the video be more concise than that. And I had a couple of days where I hadn't uploaded that video to help break this knife in. And rather than put out the first bitching video where I didn't know about it breaking in, then do an addendum talking about how it did break in, then finally put up a review, thought it would be better to just refilm a little bit talk about how terrible it was at first and how it broke in a little bit better. First thing that I noticed coming out of the box, this pivot screw was considerably too tight. You know, maybe I've got weak thumbs, but I deploy a lot of blades, and I feel like something this high quality I should be able to deploy right out of the box. It was way too tight, didn't feel smooth at all. We have nylon washers in there instead of phosphor bronze, which isn't helping anything. Uh, ultimately, I was hoping to experience that thing that people talk about with custom or high-end flippers going oh look how smooth it is and now it's doing okay this is about the low end of what I expected it took me literally a half hour of dicking around with this pivot screw to try to get it to resemble centered and still be flippable and have a minimal amount of play uh, I had to Loctite the pivot screw because it did not come Loctited from the factory on a $250 blade after I noticed that the pivot screw was much too tight, I noticed that with the pivot screw being much too tight, there was still play in all four dimensions. On a $250 knife. <sighs> okay, I thought maybe the lock will break in and there won't be as much play. That didn't happen, by the way. There's still play now that the lock is, as far as I can tell, broken in. Got it home, did some sharpness testing. And, guys, this is about the low end of what I would expect from a blade that costs $250. This is the low end. It should be no problem to expect this level of blade polish coming out of something that you paid a whole lot of money for. It should be able to slice printer paper like a dream and magazine paper with no problem. $30 Spydercos can do that. This blade came in worse than a Cold Steel or Spyderco stock edge. It was cutting paper, but it was more like a saw than I wanted it to be. Put it on the wicked edge, reprofiled it, 
and reprofiling it was a pain in the ass because it was originally ground at 23 degrees so I had to reprofile the whole thing down to 15 then put a sub bevel on at 20 and now it's doing pretty good like I said this is what I wanted this knife to be like when it came out of the box this was the lower side of my expectations I wanted it to flip like this or better I wanted it to cut like that or better I wanted there to be no play and as melodramatic as this feels to say I feel like I was sort of robbed of something here I bought my grail knife I spent two hundred and fifty dollars on an expensive knife and guys I've been watching all these Jim Skelton vids tough thumb vids tough thumb stuff on Instagram whatever all this stuff of people talking about high-end knives about how perfect the mechanicals are about how it's different than the production knives at the lower end about how smooth it is guys this knife isn't smooth even now and I've worked on it quite a bit Smooth was the farthest word from my mind when I deployed this thing right out of the box. And that's just terrible presentation. And I know it's terrible presentation because recently I unboxed this knife. This is a $50 cold steel, and cold steel gets treated like it's a joke by a lot of the people who buy blades like this. But when this knife came out of the box, the deployment was fine, the edge was great. There was nothing to distract me from the awesomeness of the design of this blade and I was awestruck and I enjoyed it and it was great and that happens with quite a few blades there's nothing to distract from how cool it is when I got this blade out of the box I didn't care how it looked I was too busy being pissed off about the presentation and if I was Lion Steel, I would be ashamed of this blade because you've gotta know if you're an executive at a company that produces two hundred and fifty dollar knives you've gotta know that if somebody buys this knife that's never had a medium quality knife before they're making the jump straight from twenty dollar knife to two hundred and fifty dollar knife maybe this is somebody making phd level money i would have sent this knife back to the retailer because i would have known from my lower quality blades that this was unacceptable because when you buy a gerber from walmart you can deploy the thing right out of the box you don't have to wait for the liner lock or even the frame lock on a Gerber to break in. Is it too much to ask for a $250 blade for the edge to come sharp, for the lock to come broken in? What do we have to do here? Actually, to the point that the night where I unboxed this thing, instead of reveling in how great my grail was, I was regretting that I didn't spend the money better. And that's a fucking embarrassment. I don't like to be the guy who's bitching behind the camera. I don't like to be ranting all the time. I want to talk about products that I love and the reasons that I love them and the way that I implement them. And this blade has grown on me. I've been enjoying flipping it the past couple of days. But I can't get over how badly it was presented and how much of an embarrassment that is for Lion Steel. As I said, it's broken in better. And it is a beautiful blade. I do love the looks of this blade. It fits fine in my hand. I find it actually most comfortable gripping Filipino grip with my thumb pretty far forward like that. Um, and overall, it's pretty cool. I've got the roto block tightened down so that it doesn't accidentally engage. That's another screw that wasn't locked tighted or tensioned properly. And the pocket clip is a little bit looser than I would have wanted it to be, but the good part about that is that it slips into a front jeans pocket very easily. Carrying in a back jeans pocket, I'm a little bit worried that it will slip out of my pocket. TNP number 123, and for some reason, I think it's just because I'm so close to the hood of the camera, I can't get it to focus, but I do have pictures on Instagram and all that. Um, I will be doing quite a bit of photography on this blade. Like I said, it is beautiful. I love the way the fluting is done, how the handle is never one consistent color of purple. You've always got different reflections going. That is awesome. The machining seems to be done perfectly. The coating seems to be done perfectly. If any complaint, there's a little barely noticeable amount of flash around this stop pin. Uh, but overall, a very beautifully executed blade. I just wish they had sent it to me in working condition. I don't feel like I should have had to have do as, done as much work as I did on this blade. And I could see people sending this back to the factory. I hope that I got the worst lemon of the lot. I don't know. I'm disappointed in this blade in the review. I'm going to give it a fair review. I'm going to give it an honest review, despite my initial disappointment. But this blade will get the shit kicked out of it in quality and presentation. Because if a $40 spider coat resilience can make me go, wow, that was smooth. Wow, that edge is fantastic. And look, there's hardly any play. 
you damn well should be able to do that for $250. Having an aluminum one block handle does not excuse that. Having a cool handle color does not excuse that. A cool blade profile and a more expensive steel does not excuse that. It's hard to even talk about expensive steel when the edge that you put on it is embarrassing. But, as I said, it is better now. The edge that came off the Wicked Edge is a very cool edge. It has held very well in the retention test that I've done so far, which has basically just been paper cutting and a little bit of cardboard. But it is holding well. The deployment is fine. I think I've got it tuned optimally for my thumb strength and how little bit of play I would like. And it does have a pretty cool sound now. Hasn't stuck in the last 50 or 100 deployments, but like I said, two, 300 to get it broken in. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Some disappointing first impressions. Like I said, we're not talking about this blade. We're talking about $250. We're talking about enough money to get you started toward a high-quality firearm. We're talking about five blades in this price range, in this quality range. Lion Steel, you got to step it up. This was, uh, this was not good on your part. And guys, when I filmed the first video, the part that I edited out, I was more angry than I am now. TNP edition, I'm happy to own a piece of the history. TNP 123, Model SR1. Overall, now that I've had time to break it in, I think I will begin to enjoy carrying it. Like I said, I feel like I was sort of robbed of that initial awestruck experience that I wanted to have with my Grail Blade. That sucks, but glad to have it now. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more of the same.